Good morning. Myself Mithun Raj from this part of the world. So today I am making this video to discuss about a particular subject for CBSE 10th standard students, science. So being a CBSE student, this subject, this particular subject plays a very important role in your life. I will tell how. There are totally lots of subjects for CBSE, but why this particular subject? All the parents, all the teachers, society are giving more importance for this subject. What is the reason? Because already you are opted for CBSE syllabus. Mostly in future you will choose technical side or you will go for the medical side. Engineers, doctors, software engineers, biotechnology students. So if you are choosing that part in your life, then everything runs through a particular subject or a science. But why a lot of students feel that this subject is very very difficult? I don't know why. But being a science teacher, I will tell it is the most easiest subject around us. According to my personal philosophy, we don't want even to study this subject to get marks. You will call me mad. I will tell you. Use minimum time to study science. And the remaining time used to learn it. I will tell an example of a student. When I was in some other place, and I don't forget that, some parents came to me and they are telling my student cannot even buy her two lines of poetry of Tulsidas. But at the same time, he can buy her an entire song from a Bollywood movie. Like a hundred lines of song, he can buy her and he can recite it free. So what's the difference between the two lines of Tulsidas and the hundred lines from the Bollywood movie? Both are written in Hindi. But I will tell one thing. That student has a particular interest towards that movie. And he has no interest in studying the Tulsi Das two line of thought. Even though that two line is easy to study than that big song, but he does not have that interest for that. So he won't do that. The same thing is regarding the science. If you have interest, just one time hear it, listen it, you can perform well. If you don't have interest, 100 times you read, how many hours you waste, there is no use. As a science teacher, it is my duty, my responsibility to make this subject easier for you to learn. That's a technique. And especially for the 10th standard CBSC, what all things you are studying from that textbook? 90% of the things you can see around us. Here's the science around us, isn't it? Just one example. The air you are breathing, inhaling, exhaling, is a part of science. I am making this video. A camcorder is also an application of science. You can hear my voice, it's also science. You can see me, that is also science. I have one of the wonderful gifts from the God, eyes. So that I can see the beautiful nature, it is also a part of science. And how we are seeing? Because of light. So we need to make a link, what we are studying in the textbook. We need to make a link between that particular subject to the surroundings. Everything is there, everything. Just look around, you will see what all things you want. Everything is science. If you are able to make that particular link between what you learn and what you observe, then a particular speciality will emerge inside you that we can call it as passion. So, science, if you want to learn science, the main thing I will tell you, if you want to learn science, the main thing is passion. You want to learn it with passion. Once you got that passion to learn science, 
then no power in this world can stop you. No power in this world can hold you to reach your aim through science. So it's my duty to make this science easier for you. Okay? Okay, leave it anyway. Let's start with the subject. You know science is actually basically it is divided into three main parts: physics, chemistry, and biology. And the three parts are almost they are equal and they are important as important as four. So basically regarding the 10th standard science, I will choose one chapter. A lot of students they have doubts every time they have doubts in that particular chapter. And the name of that chapter is electricity. Okay, let me paste it here. Oh, electric. I don't know why. Actually, I think that this is the biggest chapter in that test book. That's why students already have created something in mind that it is very difficult. Electricity is very difficult. Nobody else, very difficult. But just watch around. 99% of the people in our country, they know what is electricity. Electricity is not a city, okay? It's a source of energy. Just look around this room. Behind this wall, we can see a lot of things like this. A common wire will be there. And through this wire, a source of energy is running and it is called as electric city. So we are very familiar. I will tell. Just switch on. The fan will rotate and give you air. Another switch on. The television is on. The next one. Refrigerator is on, AC is on, bulbs, tube lights, computer. Is it interesting? Do you ever imagine how this is happening? How? It is because electricity from that switch will run through the wire which is already installed inside the wall and it will reach that home appliances and to convert that electrical energy into mechanical energy. That's the working of a fan. But from where this electricity is coming? From where? How? How does it come? For that we need to know what is electric current. You heard about electric current. Say electricity and electric current both are same. I will say the electric current is the rate of flow of charges. The rate of flow of charges is known as electric current. So, rate of flow of charges. What type of charge? Anyway, you know that all the matter in this world is made up of atoms. And atoms will have a proton, neutron and an electron. The proton and neutron is bind inside the nucleus, but electrons which orbits around the nucleus. So especially regarding this current, we can say that, you can see this, this is a cross section of a wire. And if we zoom in into a wire, we can see a cross section like this. So let me paste it here. Okay, my case. Okay, we can remove the passion. Are you passionate? I hope you are. So, let me explain this one. So, these are electrons inside a wire. This is a piece of a wire. These electrons, what actually they are doing, they are moving from one part to another. This arrow shows that the direction of the electrons. So, electron has a charge. What charge? Of course, negative charge. When this charge moves through this cross-section of wire, electricity is produced. So, electricity is nothing but the rate of flow of charge. In this case is electrons. Okay? So, how these electrons move from one place to another? How? Have you imagined? Have you heard about free electrons or valence electrons? See. So, 
for the electrons to move from one place to another. Similarly, we cannot buy electrons from a shop. Understand? We cannot make free electrons simply. But in some cases, it's a drawing of an atom. This is a nucleus in the center with protons and neutrons binded inside, and these are different, different orbits. And these are different, different types of electrons here. You can see this. But there is a particular property for this electron in the last orbit. It's called as the valenced electrons. This electron has a tendency to jump from this orbit to the orbit of the next atom. If this electron jump to the next atom, for example, if an other atom is here, it will jump from here to there. It is a movement of charge or not? The charge just moves from here to here. So automatically, electric current is created. And what force makes that electric current to flow? That force is called as electromotive force or EMF. About this electromotive force and potential difference we will discuss in the next video. But this is the Subhanama question. The rate of flow of charge is known as current. The movement of electrons inside a matter. So regarding this, not all matters will allow the movement of electrons. Mostly, what metal we are using in these types of wires? It's a shiny metal inside, isn't it? Of course, it is copper. And you know copper is a metal. So, regarding the flow of electrons, we can divide matters into three types. The first one is the conductors. The second one, of course, the insulators. The third one, it's semiconductors. So regarding the flow of free electrons, we can differentiate matter into three types. It is called as conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. So, what is a conductor? Not a bus conductor, okay? So, mostly conductors conduct electricity. It will allow the passage of electricity very easily. That way it is called as conductors. Insulators. Insulates means it won't allow the passage of electricity. Okay, one second I forgot. Example methods. Conductors, example is metals. Iron, copper, aluminium, gold, silver. Most of the metals are a good conductor of electricity. Insulators. Plastic. Common plastic is an insulator. Paper. Insulator. So, what is the difference between these two things? In conductors, have you seen this? What is this? Yes, that's free electrons. In conductors, the number of free electrons will be very, very high. Understand? There will be a lots of electrons free to move inside that matter. That's why it easily conducts electricity. But in the case of insulators, these free electrons are zero, almost zero. So, there is no movement of charge. There is no flow of charge. So, no electricity. No current will flow through an insulator. But the next one is semiconductor. Anyway, in this chapter we are not studying that. In 10th standard also we are not studying about semiconductors. I will give example. A silicon and germanium is a vast branch of knowledge, branch of physics called as electronics. We will study in higher secondary. Not now. Just to remove this. Three types of semiconductors. Actually, semiconductors, it partially conducts electricity. Partially, not 100%. Partially. So, conductors and insulators. So, tell me one question. Tell me the answer. What do you choose? What material will you choose in your electrical circuits? Is it conductor or insulator? Of course, you will choose conductor. Otherwise, if you choose insulator, you will switch on the light, but there won't be anything happening. So, my dear kids, 
That's all for today. I hope you understand. We can revise one more time. The first part is a subject called as electricity. Electricity is simple. The rate of flow of charges. Charge here is electrons. Whenever a matter has a lots of free electrons inside it, free electrons, the electrons which is able to jump from the orbit. If there is a loss of free electrons, it can move inside a matter and that force the force which moves that electrons is known as electromotive force and whenever the flow of charge takes place electric current or electricity is passing through that particular material i hope you understand about a small part of electricity in the next classes we will discuss about potential difference and also ohm's law and some numericals if all the students are getting tense by hearing these numericals, it's an easy way to solve all those things. And at the end, we will discuss about the heating effect of electric current. So that is the main part of this electricity. Okay, I am signing off from this part of the side. Anyway, during this corona time, be safe. Whenever you are going outside, you want to wear a mask. You will ask why I am not wearing. Okay, I am in a room, I said that inside a room there is nobody near me, I am only here to shoot this video and all, that's why I am not wearing mask, but whenever you are going outside, you must wear a mask and the best, best thing to do is to stay at home, be safe, okay, thanks my dear students, I hope you like this class, sooner or later we will see with the part 2 of this chapter.